morning and welcome to my channel, The Psychologist NG TV. I am Dr. Blessing and Tamu. It's been quite a while. I hope you are all doing wonderfully well. For me, I'm fine. It's a very beautiful morning out here. Um, if you're new on my channel, please just click on the subscribe button so that you can be notified of all our future videos. Please like my video and leave your comments. I would like to know what you think. Today we're going to talk about good study habits. You know, after the long lockdown, uh, a lot of students are back in school and many students really study hard uh, but do not study right and so they do not um, end up having good grades. So let's see how we can help you study better and learn better, acquire knowledge and get better grades. So, so we're talking about um, what to study, where to study and then how to study how to study right so first of all what to study now as a student either either in the secondary school or at the university level especially which is my focus you know, there are a host of materials that you need to study to be able to uh, earn good grades some students focus on studying only the notes that uh, the teacher gives them or the lecturer gives them that cannot be sufficient because uh, you'll be uh, or limiting yourself to the knowledge of your lecturer. Uh, even when you take notes in class, that's limited to the memory of the lecturer. And they say even the fantastic pen, you know, is better than memory. So, you know, do not really limit yourself to what the, the lecturer gives you. The lecturer is just supposed to be a guide. Now, you should study textbook materials that are given to you by the lecturer. You should study academic journals published, you know, uh, on the internet. You should get materials. But remember when sourcing for materials on the internet, you should verify the sources of your information because these days anybody can go out there and just put anything up on the internet and you may not, you know, the person may not put up something that is right. So make sure that your source of information is verifiable, is, you know, the person ha is an authority in the field. Uh, so study articles, study textbooks and get your hands on as many materials as possible. Now we have to study. Now, it is always good to get a particular study location where you study at consistently. Now, you, your, your, your room could be your study place or the library. You could just get a particular corner in the library where you go to study, you know, um, every day, you know, but get a particular place. Now, wherever you study, let that place be free from distractions, okay? For instance, if you have a study corner in your room, ensure that in your study corner, you don't have distractive pictures that will lead you to daydreaming. You don't have uh, distraction. Let your study area be as free of distraction as possible. Make sure your study corner is comfortable, but not so comfortable as to allow you go to sleep. Okay, so make sure you have a comfortable chair and uh, table to read with, but not a sofa that you could just, when you sit on after a few minutes, you get drowsy and fall asleep. So make sure your corner is comfortable enough to support good posture for you to read, so you don't get fatigued too easily, and so not too comfortable for, for you to go asleep. Now that's important. Another thing is ensure that you have adequate lighting and adequate ventilation in your study corner. You know when you're studying, your brain is involved, and all of this is necessary for you to be able to study better, okay? Yeah, so get a place that has adequate lighting, lighting, adequate ventilation, comfortable enough but not too comfortable to make you fall asleep and then you're good to go. Now the next thing is how to study. Now we're trying to make this, okay, quick, quick, quick. Now how to study? Now first of all, everyone that's a, that wants to do well needs a study timetable. Of course, you need a daily planner, okay? And then part of your daily planner, you should have your study timetable. Now, you should have your study timetable organized in such a way that every subject or every course you're studying in the university is taken account of, is considered when uh, preparing your study timetable, okay? So that you don't miss out on any subject or any course at all. Now, also, as part of your study timetable, ensure to mark off dates for tests dates for exams, dates for important events that you do not want to miss. That's going to help you. Okay, now when you're studying also, there are certain courses or subjects, studying which when you study one after the other might cause interference. When you have subjects, you know, that are close to each other or in uh, the team, 
you know and then you know there might be confusion sometimes so it's important for you to ensure that you space this kind of subjects that you can confuse their content or the content can cause interference either uh, proactive interference or otherwise so you keep make sure you space these subjects make sure that you follow your timetable strictly because some of us have favorite subjects and without a reading timetable you might find yourself studying only the subject that you're interested in or the one that you know you you you, you love and you may not study others but it's important for important for you to pass or have good grades in every course that you enroll in in the university or in the secondary school so ensure that you have a study timetable to guide you ensure that you stick to your study timetable another thing is the study time now there are certain times in the day where it's better to study depending on you know the individual but usually early hours of the morning and late hours of the night are good times to study the environment is calm the weather is favorable and then you can concentrate and understand better so it's good for you to plan to study either early hours of the morning or late in the night now if you're going to engage in midnight study for me i used to study a lot during the night now what that means you have to compensate for sleep you have to sleep during the day go to bed early so you can wake up early and then study during the night those are good times to study now let's talk about your study style okay now i'm going to try to um train you uh, on the sq3r study method that was um proposed by or propounded by robinson in 1946 i hope yeah now that's sq3r now what does s stand stand for s stands for survey now before you begin to study take up the material that you should you want to study for the particular day and do a little survey of the material that is to say, you scan through the, the topics you want to study for that day, ensure that you take notes while you scan of the topics, of the subtopics, of important, anything that's important in the, in, in, in the, uh, the content for that day. You know, if there are graphs, take a look. If there are um, tables, scan through all of those. Do a survey of the material and have an idea of all that you're going to encounter during that period of study for that day now when that is done the next thing you do is questions Q is for questions S for survey Q for questions now sometimes your study materials might already contain questions contain questions now if they do and the questions are adequate then you can use those questions but if there are no questions contained in your study material then go ahead to convert the themes you know the the, the the topic the subtopics um the themes your tables and graphs convert them to questions which you will use in your study so it's important for you to have questions written down to guide your study so at the end of your study or towards you come back and answer all of those questions now I'll ask you then the three are the first r is for read now there are different types of reading depending on your purpose for reading you know we have scanning your material we have skimming through all of this will come in in your survey the period of survey now but when it comes to the proper reading that should be detailed reading of the material you have to read with all your senses present you must concentrate you know when you're doing your reading at this time so ensure that you read to understand now students should avoid cramming that is why you must distribute your reading time then once you resume school make sure you read from the beginning of resumption all through the semester distribute your reading time and reading material so you can take it in in bits and understand in bits when you don't read from the beginning of the semester when you try to do all of your reading just towards your examination time that is when students begin to cram and cramming is not an adequate method of reading because you it hampers understanding and besides while writing an examination if you happen to forget one keyword of the material you crammed you get confused so avoid cramming make sure that you read to understand detailed reading read to understand if the um, uh, words you don't understand check them up on, in the dictionary that will help you understand your material and for you to really uh, ingest and understand the material properly you have to go over the material again and again that's another reason why it's important to spread your reading over a long period in fact you should read during the holidays and as soon as school resumes begin to read that will help you spread your material read in bits or you help you to practice practice they say makes perfect without practicing what you read if you read once and for all there's a risk of decay you know what we read is taught in our memory 
as uh, engrams, memory engrams, and then they could decay with time if there's a lack of practice. So ensure that you read the material and you have time to go over the material again and again and again. Ensure your reading is detailed with concentration and that you understand the material. Try not to cram. If there's anything you don't understand, seek explanation either from colleagues or from the teacher or seek additional resources that will explain these materials to your understanding. Please don't cram. Cramming is not good. So after you've read this material to your understanding, recite is the next one, sorry. So we have survey, questions, read, then recite and review. Now recite is a place where you go to answer the questions that you asked. Okay, so when you are reciting, some people will recite with their mouths verbally, and but I think it is better to recite by answering those questions, penning them down. What I usually did when I was in school, and believe me, I was a pretty good scholar. Uh, what what I used to do was to sit down as though it was an exam situation and respond the same way I would respond in the examination. If you are a smart student, your questions will not be far from what the lecturer will ask or the teacher will ask, especially if you were in class. You will know what interests the teacher and where his focus is. Now, so you sit down and answer your questions, whatever you need to, whatever you know you need to pass the examination. And as a university student, you need to give detailed answers. You know, you need to answer the questions, bring in all of the keywords when you answer. Whilst you're answering in your own words, whilst you're answering from what you have formulated, you must ensure that you captivate, you capture all the keywords, all the key points are captured in your answer. And so you write this down in details as though it's an exam condition. Now, make sure you answer the questions properly. Make sure all of the materials that you assemble to read come in, in are reflected in your answer. I remember when I was in the university, there was a particular course in which I had a B. And my mother happened to have studied the same course that I studied in the university. And I had her books, my colleagues didn't. Now, I had a classmate of mine who had earned an A in that course. And I went to the lecturer and said, excuse me, sir, I had a B in this course, and this colleague of mine had an A. I have materials that he doesn't have. Can you please explain to me what I did wrong that made me get a B and he got an A? And he said, okay, I'll tell you. He said, the problem is that though you're a very smart student, you're responding to questions as though you're still in the secondary school. He said, when you're in the university, you're expected to have universal knowledge. This means when you ask a question, exhaust all of your knowledge on that question. Everything you know about that question, whether related fields or what, bring them in in your answer. The more details, the better your grades. From that day, I began to do that. And believe me, there were many, many more A's after this. So write down your questions, organize in an organized format as though you were in an exam. Now the last R is for review. So after you've read, you've recited by writing and answering your questions down, then you go to review. Now review is where you reread your answers, you look at your material again, ensure that you captured or you went through every material you were expected to read, you captured all the topics for the day, and then look at your questions and answer, ensure that the answer was adequate, that it captured all that, all the key points, all the keywords, everything that you wanted to be reflected. Now, there definitely will be some things that you had left out. There definitely will be some places where, you know, you didn't do as well as you should have. This is the time where you revisit your notes, read again, ensure that you understand everything, you remember everything this time, and then calm down back to your questions and update your answers, okay? Ensure your answer captures everything. So, when you survey your materials first, ask for survey, Q for questions, then you read, you recite or respond to your questions, you review your answer to ensure everything has been captured in your answer, then you're good to go. Believe me, if you do this consistently, when you get into the exam hall, nothing takes you by surprise. Most times, what I used to discover when I was in school was that all of the questions that the teacher will ask will not be far from what I already asked and answered. So I just begin to replay my answers in my head and put them down. And like I said, you end up very successful. Now, um, in the next video, somewhere in the future, we will discuss some ways that you can enhance your memory. Some things that you can do to ensure that you remember everything uh, that you need to remember during the examination. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the Psychologist NG TV uh, so that you can be notified of all of our future videos. We are going, there's a lot of educational stuff coming in the future. You would love it. You won't want to miss out. Please like this video. Please leave your comments. I want to know what you think about these videos. And then sure to follow me on Instagram at the Psychologist NG, on Twitter at the Psychologist NG, and on Facebook at the Psychologist NG as well. And uh, I have some of my books uh, available on Amazon. Uh, I'd like you to check me out. Okay, Blessing Tamu is the author name. I just published a book, a, a new book. Uh, that one is um, 
theme is religion though and then i have another book that's going to be out shortly uh, that one is on adolescent reproductive health and all of these books uh, my style of writing is actually storytelling so you find them very entertaining captivating or inspiring suspense filled and also uh, for the spiritual ones they're edifying thank you for being with me on my channel today uh, I have some of the links up the video if you can check them out to click on them some also in the introduction and have yourself a beautiful week make sure you read make sure you work hard there's no alternative to success it's actually hard work hard work so put in all the hard work and focus and you will earn the grades that you want have a beautiful day out there i love you and from me to you bye